welcome to Pop Dust Presents. I'm Ryan Kingery, and I'm very excited because our guest today is a singer-songwriter originally from North Carolina, and she's got a new single out. It's called Girls Like You. Please welcome Anna Clendenning. Hi. Hi Anna. <laughs> How, How are, are you this morning? morning? <laughs> no, I asked first. <laughs> I am good. It was a tough morning. I went to therapy, but it's like a good tough. So I'm having a great day, but whew, kick my butt. How are you? That healing process is, that's so funny. I literally had therapy too. I'm not trying to be your twin, but like we're having twin energy right now. I had some <laughs> therapy too. Uh, worth emptying my pockets for, right? <laughs> and my soul. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now you're in Nashville still? Are you still in Nashville or are you back in LA? Mm -hmm. Nope. So, I moved in July of last year and no plans of going back to LA for a little while. So what was that like? What was what prompted that move? Uh it's like you want my total honesty. Um yeah. LA was already hard to live in. It's just very, very busy um, work-wise, people-wise, traffic-wise, very expensive, very hard on my mental health as well. Um, and then when COVID hit, it just, I didn't understand why I needed to be there anymore. Right around like the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021, I realized that I, I felt as though I had done my part as far as put boots on the ground, build this career, meet the people, go in the rooms, do the social networking. Um, and it just kind of clicked one night. I was talking to one of my friends that lived here and I was like, should I buy a house? And he was like, yeah, why not? And I looked in LA and not in my budget and then i was like how do you like nashville and he's like i love it and i was like cool and then i got on the phone that night with my team and was like can i move to nashville and they were like let's get back to you the next day and they did and i was on zillow immediately <laughs> looking for houses manifest it girl mm -hmm. oh that's so cool and i mean nashville's great and it's such a big music city and so what's the connection there from moving and producing your new single which is kind of like a harkening back to your old single boys like you. I'm glad people are, uh, well, I, I don't know why people wouldn't get that, but um, I'm glad there is a connection there. Um, honestly, could have moved anywhere I wanted to, but furthering a career, continuing growing, being a part of the atmosphere in Nashville just seemed like the next best step down from LA. It's, growing massively. I have a ton of friends that moved here from LA and coincidentally enough, the producer that was producing my album moved here a month before I did. So it was just like everything was kind of aligning and it just, it just made sense. I mean, and everyone was like, oh, you're buying a house. You're going to be stuck. And I was like, you guys obviously don't know how buying a house works. I can just rent it out. And honestly, I can go buy a van and live in the middle of Nebraska. Like I could do whatever I want. I'm not tied here. But trying to get out of L.A. but make an adult move. <laughs> yeah. Nashville's popping off. Are you? Do you happen to be in East Nashville? I am south of East Nashville. So I frequent East Nashville a lot, but not there. Yeah, that seems like very your vibe. Really? I don't... Yeah. I, I, I'm, well, my sister lives in East Nashville. It feels like a, I, I happen to like it, but yeah. I love I it. I don't, I don't know if I could live there. I'm like more in a, almost a suburban area and it's nice. I'm like four miles from downtown, like five miles from East. It's great. Oh, that sounds so lovely. And so with the single, um, cause I'm like, I want to pick your brain about like, Obviously, you met someone and had a great experience enough to like write a song about it. I'm trying to meet that person. Um, was it in Nashville? Was it in LA? We want to know, girl. Give us the details. So this is actually so to kind of preface this single. Each song is actually about an ex in my EP. Um, 
And so this is about, um, obviously about a girl. So, man, there's like so much to the story. I'm trying to like streamline it. I also am not allowed to drink caffeine anymore. So this is day one of no caffeine. So I am, I am hanging on. Oh my Um, gosh. Yeah. So, so in 2020, I had gotten out of a relationship and was really bad. There's a song about him on the EP that I actually already put out uh, called Sweatshirt. Um, But I really kind of took that as an opportunity. I had hit a rock bottom and I took that opportunity to, or took that as an opportunity to kind of just like find myself, find myself again, find a better version of myself that's happy. And honestly, I had kind of dealt with some like internalized homophobia. Like I had this idea in my head, like, don't kiss a girl. You might like it. But like, wh- okay. And if I did like it, who cares? It's it's weird because I grew up in a very liberal town. My aunt is openly gay. My uncle on my other side is openly gay. My cousin is gay. Parents were super accepting. Like there was no, it was just weird because there was no immediate external forces being like, don't be gay. Don't do this. Don't do that. So I don't really know where it came from. So I had been, you know, having those thoughts off and on for about six or seven years and just like, excuse my language, but totally just said, fuck it or screw it. Um, And was like, I'm going to just do whatever. And so I was actually online and I had, I had seen this girl on social media and was just like, wow, she's beautiful all this stuff. She seems like she has a great personality. I want to get to know her. And so kind of like slid in her DMs and she was like, oh, I know who you are from Vine. And I was like, ah, <laughs> that's terrifying. Or it was one of my older songs. And I was like, oh gosh, um, which is great. But also like I have grown so much, even like in the past two years, like I don't even recognize who I was in 2020 and like in the best ways possible. Um, and so I was like, okay, screw it. Full sense let's just try it. And so we started like FaceTiming. Um, I was in LA. They were in, in Florida. They were in Florida. She's got to know that this song is. Uh, we, haven't, we haven't talked since. Um, um, but so we started talking and like, after we've been talking for a little bit, she's like, yeah, I, um, I'm actually like have a trip planned with my friends to come out to LA and for the first like day or two, I don't like my friends aren't going to meet me out there. And I was like, Oh, okay. So we ended up like planning to meet up and then we met up and we were hanging out at my house. And I, of course, like scared. I'm not going to make a move. I'm not going to make a move. You're going to have to make a move. I'm like, thought I was going to be a very like submissive and shy. And we were sitting outside on my hammock and it, you know, like, the two stars that you can see in LA were out. And it was like super cute. (laughs) And then I like looked at her and was like, oh my God, just kiss me. And she didn't, I was like, okay, screw it. And I like grabbed her face and I kissed her. And it was just this like great, I don't know. It was great. It was super cute. And I was like, this like whole wall came down of like everything that I had just been tossing around in my head. I was like, ah. Cool. So I do like it and there's nothing wrong with it. And it's not scary. And I mean, I was still nervous. I was like, I've never even made the first move with a guy. Like, I don't know where this came from. I was like, all right, cool. Um, and so then we decided to like start seeing each other. And of course I was not ready to be in a relationship and all the work that she had done to, um, grow from her last relationship and just be better with a lot of stuff. I was, I was, not doing a service to myself or her. And there was a lot of stuff that I needed to work on. So unfortunately that didn't work out. Um, But yeah, so the song, most of the song is about her, but also, I mean, there have been numerous girls since, you know, whenever that I've been like, oh wow, like I'm attracted to you. Like there was a girl at my gym when I first moved to LA. And I remember we were riding in the car back from West Hollywood and she like put her hand on my, uh, laugh and I was like oh my god just driving between the lines <laughs> like don't crash stop at the red lights and in a sense it's about 
you know, that one girl, but also like all encompasses all of the women that have kind of just like pushed me and helped me to just like explore my sexuality, be very open and be honest with myself and yeah, just, just be myself. <laughs> I love even watching you talk about that. Like you're so excited, but there's still a little like, I'm new to this and it seems like the floodgates have opened and like, this is your time to shine. I'm loving this for you. And it's June. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, we weren't even going to put the song out and we were like, what the heck? Are you kidding me? This is like my first real Pratt I get to celebrate. Why would we not put this song out right now? Like, wait, so yeah, why, what, what was behind that? If you can talk about that. Honestly, we just like hadn't even thought about it. Like I was like, okay, these are the two songs I want to come first as like standout songs. And then it's like someone brought it up. Like we just hadn't thought about it. Someone was like, yo, you thought about putting girls like you out during Pride Month? And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> like you were yeah. so stupid. Yeah. So it's 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 great. Um, because 2020, it was like that had come after pride and then 2021 i was moving and so i'm like super excited this year i'm going to nashville pride and just yeah. getting to just embrace this whole like community that i finally get to be a part of and just honestly just be myself which is great like screw it <laughs> yeah and i just want to go back to what you were saying about um there is this group of people who grow up liberal like in a liberal house and have like accepting parents but then like also still grow up in the 90s and so there's this like kind of tension between like oh my values and then like how I'm living my life and just from my perspective I feel like this song is like speaking to everybody and it's like you know like uh you can take a step back and like be your open full self and without being too saccharine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I I was trying to convey the internalization of, you know, like my, I don't know, I guess being hesitant about it mm -hmm. um, without being like, like negative, I guess, like having this negative part of the song. Cause it's not, I mean, I love songs like this, but it's not just a song that's like, oh, I kissed a girl and I liked it. Like, or <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and, and while it doesn't get super deep into that side to me, and, and that's the thing about songs, you can kind of take them however you want. Um, Cause Boys Like You is a happy song. And the amount of people that have been like, I cry to this song, like I've been cheated on listening to this song. So I've realized since then, like to write my story, like write my story and have my own interpretation, but like just kind of hand it off to people. And so with girls like you, for me, it's a lot about dealing with that, but kind of more so the like, okay, I'm ready. Like there's a space in my bed and a spot in my head for something new. Like, cause girls like you got me questioning everything I thought I knew. Like, you know, it's just, okay. I am this way, but there's also, that's the cool thing too that actually living in LA really helped me with is you're never too old to explore yourself. You're never too old to find new hobbies. You're never too old to explore your sexuality. You're never too old. Like there's no like, oh, I knew since I was little or oh, like I came out when I was 18. Like, I think that's super beautiful, especially now we've come into this like, uh, less of a stigma, more of like an accepting climate where people who haven't even thought about it or have like suppressed it for so long get to just be like, oh, okay, I'm 53 and I'm going to go hang out with a guy. I'm going to go hang out with a girl. Like it, it doesn't really matter. And that's something that I've really actually kind of been struggling with because in my head, sexuality was very black and white. You're gay, you're straight, like you're bisexual but like it's for me it's a whole spectrum like putting this song out so I actually just got a relationship with um a girl but before that I was dating a guy and so for me it's very hard because I didn't know when the song was going to come out and I was dating a guy and I was like I feel like a fraud 
Mm. Like, I don't want to put a song out called Girls Like You and then be dating a guy. And I have to remember, it's not cut and dry, you know? Like, that's Mm -hmm. why I personally, not to get too far into a rabbit hole, but that's why I don't like labels. People are like, oh, are you lesbian now? Oh, are you bisexual? I'm like, dude, I, I don't care. Like, my criteria is I'm attracted to you. And I uh, be nice to me. That's it. Like the bar is super low over here. It's simple. Um, and like I guess you could boil it down to being pansexual, but yeah, I I should just I actually haven't really talked about that because I was kind of like not ashamed, but like how do you bring that up? That like, oh, I felt like I needed to be with a girl to put the song out, or like I've I've been dealing with that a lot actually. Um, but getting better at it. I mean, it's all a learning experience. It's new for me, but you know, definitely understanding that sexuality is the spectrum and you don't have to fit into a box. That's something that I really come to understand recently with the song. Yeah, and of and of course it makes sense that, you know that's still hard to embrace. Like we live in a more accepting society, but there's still the underlying vibe that it's not okay. It's it's more like, if it, it seems like where we are in society now, it's like, uh, okay, you can be gay and we're not gonna stone you, but it's still not good. Like you'll see it in, I see it a lot in like media and like, shows with teenagers coming out and the mother will always say we'll love you no matter what and that line no matter what is implying that it's not okay but we'll like you anyway and so like yeah like it's still there it's just not people aren't saying oh that's gay like we did in the 90s to mean Uh something bad but it's still there like we've got our pride flag now but you know and I, and which, and then again, like this is my interpretation of your song, but it, it feels like a song for people who, yeah, are not sure, are not sure, weren't, weren't certain from when they were born that they were gay or straight, have, have had a, an exploratory journey where they're still kind of figuring stuff out. And I love the way you put it as like, mm-hmm. it's simple, but I think it's important where it's, you know, you, are you don't know you don't have a label it's just just an experience that you're experiencing so and and what's interesting i've never felt any kind of like i've always felt accepted by like the lgbtq plus community but i was in turn like i was had this like internal like fear of okay well I mean, exactly what I just said, like I'm dating a guy and I'm putting a song out called Girls Like You, people are going to call me a fraud. I don't want people like to have these preconceived notions about me or like, oh, she's not bisexual. She's not pansexual. She just like had a thing with a girl and that was it. Like this, mm-hmm. like I I just wanted to share an experience and I'm just, I, I am and I have been nervous to put this out because I don't want to, I don't want to have my feelings and my experience be invalidated and discredited because like, to me, it was, is, was, and is a very real thing. And again, like the whole label thing, like I had somebody be like, Oh, are you lesbian now? And I was like, what? No, like, I, I still like guys, like I like girls, like, and for people to be like, Oh, (laughs) like, I don't know. I just, yeah, that's something that I'm, I, and I guess that's something I should share, like, and I want to share with people when I do put the song out is like, I still, like, I don't deal with like certain things that other people deal with, but I'd still deal with like stuff questioning around my sexuality. Like everyone just wants to be accepted and whether, whatever side of whatever community that is. Um, so it's been, it's kind of scary, like, but in a different reason than I thought it would be. Yeah, I get that. And then now I just, cause now I'm curious, like, so here we are now with your new single out. And now I wanna take it all back to way to your Vine days. What's that journey like? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, girl, I'm bringing it up. I'm bringing it up. <laughs> so I used to just despise when people were like, oh my gosh, I recognize you from Vine because 
around 2015, I made this transition into being an artist. I didn't want to be a social media influencer. That wasn't me. It felt very fake. It felt very annoying. And like people that want to do that, that's great. Do your mm -hmm. thing. Like make your money, make your content. If it's making you happy, great. Not for me. Was not making me happy. I just felt like I had to like pander to certain people and follow these trends. And I realized I want to make music. Um, and so I was doing covers, little snippets on Vine, and also just like being myself and people gravitated towards it. Um, but yeah, and I used to resent people recognizing me from Vine because I felt like, no, I'm an artist now. I'm not doing any covers, I'm writing my own stuff. And like, I still deal with that actually. People are like, oh, I'll do a cover of this. And I'm like, no, I'm not a cover artist. Like mm -hmm. I am an artist and like, I want you to hear my own stuff. But I mean, it's been a six, seven year transition. And now I'm starting to like really appreciate, excuse me, really appreciate Vine. Cause that's where I got my start. I mean, I have this, I didn't want a Vine logo, but I had gotten Vines like tattooed on me. Cause honestly, I mean, we could go into it in so much depth. Like I was dealing with severe agoraphobia, anxiety, and I couldn't leave. And Vine was literally my like escape to the world. And or escape from the world into a world like, and it honestly pushed me to go out of my house, to go to these like meetups, to go meet these people off the internet and to open up about my story about anxiety, which is crazy because 2014 isn't that long ago, but there was still like the stigma around mental health has lessened since then. Like it was so crazy. Yeah. The amount of backlash I got and to think now it's so accepted, like that's so beautiful. And I'm I'm glad that I feel like I was able to kind of take the tiniest chip away from that wall or that stigma. And I really am so grateful for it because it opened up all these opportunities and saved my life. I mean, I was in a very dark place and to have, you know, kind of my life going down this path and then have simultaneously something really good happening, it like made it kind of meet in the middle. Yeah. Um, and it opened up, you know, other social media platforms growing. It opened up, you know, being on a talent show and, and all these things. And I'm super grateful for it. And honestly, that's like the tough thing is sometimes it just comes with time, like accepting things. And so now I love it when people are like, I recognize you from Vine. It just makes me feel old when people do that. <laughs> um, because my first viral vine was in 2013. I'm like, oh my gosh, my age is also something I struggle with. As a female in the entertainment industry, you're like, I have an expiration date at 30 and I have to make it. Or like I'm, I'm competing against 15 year olds and um, all of that. But I feel like, and I'm biased because vine was like my thing. I feel like vine was so special because social media was still still starting to grow and it was a smaller community. There was about 200 really large Vine accounts. And other than that, like it wasn't like TikTok is today or Instagram. Like people talk about people that have millions of followers and I'm like, that's really awesome. I don't know who that person is or even what it is they do that you're talking about. Yeah. And like, I'm sure other people feel that way. I'm sure YouTubers felt that way when Vine came around. They were like, who are all these people? There's like 10 OG YouTubers. And now these like 200 Viners come out of nowhere. And then Musical.ly, which turned into TikTok happened. And like, it's so funny because I didn't think I would be on the other side where I was like, oh, TikTokers, like. Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. When there's going to be an app after that, and there's going to be another app or another trend after that. And while I like it, it's good and bad because it, it was, I'm very grateful it happened. And I'm very grateful and blessed to have all the success that I have surrounding all that. But like, I also hate social media. Like, and there's mm -hmm. kind of a trend not to get too far off, but promoting my new singles, I have to be on social media because I have a platform, use it, hello. But the emphasis that is being put on artists to create for TikTok, to create for social media in this like unnatural way where we're again pandering to to kids, which like some of my music is experience that like 13 year olds haven't gone through. 
Yeah. And maybe some have, which is actually kind of terrifying because I'm 29, you know, I'm like, whoa, hold on. Um, I'm over half your age. But to see multiple artists that I know personally as well, just like it, 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 it burns you out. You, you go and you're like, okay, how do we write a song for TikTok? You're like, I'm sorry, what? We're not gonna, you know, I, I, like, you, I don't know if you've heard Adele in her interview. She was like talking to her label and her label was like, you have to make uh, music for TikTok. And she goes, no, they were like, you have to make, you have to make TikTok or not music for TikTok, but you have to make TikToks of your songs. How are kids gonna know? She was like, they're moms. Like they grew up listening to me. Like that's who I make music for. Like, and also Adele is a legend. Like if you don't like, she's like pink or, you know, someone who is always going to sell out arenas, but doesn't need to broadcast herself. And yeah. it's just sad to see like, and again, putting out new music, it's even more so in my face. Cause I, I took a while away from it and you got to play the game and you got to do it. Cause like, again with COVID it's not like you could just tour and people would you know figure out who you are it's right but I mean at the end of the day I'm still writing music I want to write I'm and still telling I want to write. my experiences and I'm very very lucky for that yeah and lucky that you have an artistry right you and so for you TikTok social media yeah, it's annoying to like push your stuff, but like you have stuff, right? Like think of like all these people like who don't have an art form, who need one and they're just kind of like flailing. And I think that's kind of where social media drops the ball because when you don't have an artistry to show people, you're just kind of like absorbing everything and come becoming like somebody to consume products and other people's stuff. And And to speak on that, it makes me sad when people have just gained a following just cause I don't even know, like they're good looking or just something totally different. And then they decide, oh, I want to do music. I've always wanted to, or maybe they felt like they had to. That is a whole different world you're about to be critiqued on. Yeah. Oof. And that is rough. Cause you've got people where it's like, they are born and bred raised, like playing guitar since they could move their fingers and they have someone who they feel has come in and, and like, they're like, what are you doing? Like, and I mean, honestly, if we're being really candid, I've been that person where I'm like, you literally got popular cause you're attractive. And now, I mean, it's a jealousy thing as well for me. Like you, you got popular because you have a bunch of followers. Now you're singing and you're getting all these cool features by people that I have been, that I wouldn't even dream of getting to work with. And yeah, that's absolutely. again, my own personal problem, but it's just like, I, I can't imagine what those people go through being picked apart. Cause I've been there to an extent, but even more so now we have, we have a whole new generation coming up on social media and there's so many more users now. Like, the things people have said to me, I can only imagine on an even larger scale is Oof. right. Tough. Ah, uh, yeah. But it's been, man, what a crazy journey for you. I was like, I gotta ask her about Vine because <laughs> that's so <laughs> wild. Like 2013 and 2022, like you just, I mean, we're all different people, but like we get to see you evolve through your music, which. It's very cool, you know, and I'm excited about your new single. I'm excited to see your growth. I'm excited that you're wearing that shirt. I need to get a shirt with my name on it. We I don't think I don't I don't think my therapist knows that or like I don't think she knows fully like what I do because when I walked in, she's like, "Okay, I see you with your name on your shirt," and I was like, "Hold up!" <laughs> First of all, this was like a merch sample they gave to me to see if I even liked it, but also. Why would you promote something that you don't love? It's uh, this used to be red, by the way. Like that's how much I've worn it. Like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm going to. Well, the, the letters, not the whole shirt. That oh, I was like, what? no, no, no. You're like, I don't even know how you got black and white on that, but no. But the lettering was red. Um, yeah, don't promote something that you don't fully support. And I mean, I wear this every day, and I have to. I forget that my name is on it, and I'm like, yep, oops. I love it. I like the shirt. It. 
We're here for you. We're here for your new single. I want everybody to stream it. It's so good. Um, and yeah, just thanks for like being yourself, being open and honest. Um, it's hard. It's hard to put yourself out there. And like, I really commend you. And I'm glad you're like Nashville. It's a wonderful city. Yeah. I, I mean, that really means a lot to hear because this is a totally new thing that I'm being open about. Because like anxiety, depression, mental health, all that stuff, I'll say whatever you want. But this is like, mm -hmm. I've never talked about this before. So, because it's deep, cool. it's deeply pressed in your gut. Yeah. It's down there. It's down there, girl. Oh, well, you're wonderful. So great talking to you. So easy. Um, I love your music. And yeah, thank you so much for coming on and joining us. This is great. Any opportunity to just ramble. Is good with me. It's like having yeah. a friend that I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Anna. Thank you. Yeah. And I hope you have an awesome day. Yeah. You too. <laughs> Thanks, girl. <laughs> All right, everybody. That was Anna Clendenning. Her new single, Girls Like You, is out now. And and thank you everybody for watching. And you can go to popdust.com if you want to see more interviews about music and general pop culture. And if you want to follow me, I'm at that's a voice name on Instagram. And have a great day, everyone.